fuck are you doing here, Nathan? Everything all right, horse? Your Highness. Take a deep breath, that's right. <laughs> Left order right. Nice, please, Danny. Three, two, one. Today we're going to tell you the storyline of a movie called Operation Fortune, Ruse de Guerre, from the year 2023. Telling us the story of a super spy named Orson Fortune who got a mission to retrieve a stolen deadly AI weapon. With his crew and a Hollywood's big star recruit, they went on a globetrotting mission to save the world. So, without further ado, let's get watching. But before we start, Please support our channel by subscribing and click the bell icon for future notifications. Now, let's start. The movie begins in Odessa, Ukraine, where a group of rogue mercenaries carry out a robbery with the intention of stealing highly advanced AI weapons. Not only that, but they also mercilessly kill all of the scientists there before taking the weapons they had just created. Two days later, there was a spy contractor named Nathan Jasmine who had just received a call from the British government. Nathan. Upon his arrival, Nathan was given a task by a government official named Knighton to retrieve the stolen mysterious AI weapon called the Handle. The hand. After Knighton explains the destruction that might happen if the weapon falls into the wrong hands, Nathan finally agrees, and to carry out the mission, Nathan recommends a spy named Orson Fortune to lead the team. Initially, Knighton refuses because Orson's fee is very high, and he is also a highly demanding person. Instead, Knighton suggests Nathan use another spy named John instead. Nathan explains that John currently works for his rival, Mike Hook. With no other options left, Knighton finally agrees, and Nathan goes to meet Orson who was still in recovery in Morocco. Fuck are you doing here, Nathan? Nathan explained his plan extensively, but Orson firmly refused because he was still in recovery at that time. After Nathan explained that the payment was very high, and more importantly, the mission involved world security, Orson finally agreed to join the mission, and they flew to Madrid, Spain, to begin their mission. Ah. Upon arrival in Madrid, they were already awaited by two agents named Sarah and J.J. Davies. Your Highness? Sarah was a great hacker while JJ was a sniper. And it turned out that they had been recruited to assist Orson in his mission. Long story short, they went straight to the airport to seize a hard drive from a courier named Donald. They then divided the tasks, with Sarah in the office hacking the cameras and guiding the team through her microphone. Can you hear it? While Orson, JJ, and two other backup teams named Jane and Marsha monitored Donald's movements. They watched and planned to ambush Donald in a secluded place, but everything was not as easy as imagined because there was another team who also wanted the hard drive. They disabled Jane and Marshall one by one without being noticed by Sarah. Sarah, who was suspicious because they both didn't respond, finally realized that there was another hacker manipulating the camera. Hearing that, Orson immediately realized that the culprit was none other than John, who currently works for Mike. Sarah, who successfully took over the system, immediately informed Orson that he was being followed by two people from behind. Eight and six o'clock, one. Take a deep breath. After successfully incapacitating them, Orson immediately went out to capture Donald, but there were already four of Mike's henchmen there before him, and a brawl broke out. Senor, senor. <laughs> After defeating them, Nathan came to pick up Orson. Suddenly, Donald had a heart attack in the car, and at the same time, several cars appeared from behind, chasing and blocking their way to take the hard drive. Realizing his dying condition, Donald revealed an important fact that he was forced to become a courier because his wife was being held hostage. However, his face was not known by the hard drive buyer, and Donald instructed Nathan to go to the Duchess Madrid and disguise himself as him to meet the buyer. In return, Donald begged them to save his wife, and he eventually died. At the same time, they were racing against time because outside, Mike's group was trying to forcibly open the car door. When the data was already copied, the car door opened, and Mike took a copy of the hard drive. Awesome. From Sarah's microphone, she explained that they didn't need to worry because the object was useless without a password, and the only way was for Nathan to disguise himself as Donald to find out who bought the hard drive. Long story short, Nathan disguised himself as Donald and met the buyer. 
Sarah, who detected the buyer's face from a hidden camera, finally found out that one of them was Ben Harris, a lawyer for the mafia boss named Greg Simmons, who sold illegal weapons. Seeing this, Orson felt pessimistic and unsure if he could capture Simmons because he was very agile and one of the biggest arms dealers in the world. Sarah saw that Simmons was a benefactor for orphans and a big fan of an actor named Danny Francesco, so she came up with an idea to take advantage of it. They quickly rushed to Los Angeles to pick up Danny. Long story short, they arrived and disguised themselves as new agents for Danny. Orson managed to get through and talk directly to Danny. He asked Danny to attend a charity event that would be held by Simmons in France. At first, Danny refused firmly, but in the end, he couldn't do anything when Orson threatened to expose Danny's dirty secrets with his sister-in-law to the public, which would risk his career. And finally, Danny agreed to help Orson. The three of them went on a boat. When they arrived at the cruise ship where the event was taking place, Orson and Sarah told Danny to distract Simmons while they gathered as much information as possible. Sure enough, when Simmons saw Danny, he approached him and started talking to him. <laughs> Orson and Sarah, who were strategizing, accidentally saw Mike's henchmen, the same ones they saw at the airport earlier. Realizing this, they understood that Mike was also there for information. They split up, with Sarah entering a room to install a bug while Orson followed and beat up Mike's henchmen. <laughs> Sarah was caught by Ben Harris, but with her acting skills, she managed to deceive him and buy time for Orson. Orson defeated his opponent with ease and even played around with him. Let's go to Ryan. After Orson got rid of the henchman by throwing him into the sea, Sarah said goodbye to Ben and went up to see Danny. Upstairs, Simmons immediately offered Danny and Sarah to visit his villa in Turkey to show off his lifestyle and wealth. Shortly thereafter, Simmons' business associates arrived, and they all clamored to take pictures with Danny, while Simmons whispered to Sarah, asking her to be his mistress and promising her wealth. But suddenly Orson arrived and took them all away. Back to Nathan and JJ, they were listening to Simmons' conversation with his business associates. Through their conversation, it was revealed that the AI weapon would be sold for 10 billion US dollars, and, more importantly, Simmons was just a middleman, and the true identity of the buyer remained unknown. The next morning, Orson and the others discussed who the person buying the AI weapon could be. With no other options, Orson decided to take matters into his own hands and sneak into Simmons' associate's house to steal the buyer's data. As night fell, Orson silently infiltrated the house, carrying a tranquilizer gas. With Sarah's help in hacking the CCTV, Orson released the gas into the air ducts, spreading it throughout the rooms. One by one, the people inside began to faint, allowing Orson to move freely. Following Sarah's guidance, Orson managed to open the safe and copy all the data from the laptop he found. After finishing, Orson decided to steal some money and all the jewelry in the house to mislead them and make it appear as if a robbery had occurred. However, just as he was about to leave, Orson was caught by two guards who were still conscious. He pretended to be terrified, deceiving them, and at the right moment, Orson swiftly grabbed one of them nuts and easily defeated both of them. The next morning, they regrouped to examine the results of Orson's copy from the previous night. However, despite searching, they couldn't find the item that Simmons was selling. Shortly after, they overheard a conversation between Simmons and someone named Kasim. Kasim informed Simmons that their associate Alexander had been robbed by a mysterious individual the previous night. Based on the interrogation, it was revealed that the culprit acted alone and effortlessly defeated Alexander's two personal guards. Orson, upon hearing this, appeared relieved as his identity remained unknown. Sarah, who had been hacking into their systems all along, finally managed to obtain the location and identity of Kasim, who turned out to be a Turkish government official. Additionally, they discovered that Simmons and Kasim would be having a secret meeting in three days. To find out their plans, Nathan instructed Sarah and Danny to accept Simmons' invitation to visit his villa in Turkey. 
In no time, Sarah and Danny arrived in Turkey and were warmly welcomed by Simmons and his guards. Not wanting to waste any time, Simmons immediately showed them his collection of antique cars. Seeing that Danny liked one of the cars, Simmons didn't hesitate and gave it to him, and they both quickly got in and started driving it. Meanwhile, Sarah hurriedly set her plan in motion to tamper with Simmons' computer. She noticed that there was a CCTV system being monitored directly by Amelia, Simmons' assistant. Sarah quickly made her way to hack into it. Switching to Orson and JJ, it turns out they were currently monitoring Kasim's movements. There, Orson was taken aback as he sees Mike also keeping an eye on Kasim. Sarah, who has just finished hacking the CCTV, immediately proceeds with her plan to tamper with Simmons' computer and gather information. Orson, upon seeing Ben Harris, decides to discreetly tail him. It doesn't take long for Sarah to find out and report to Nathan that Simmons only purchased stolen AK-47 rifles at the beginning of the movie. Upon hearing this, Nathan appears disappointed as they got the wrong person, as Simmons is not the buyer of the AI weapons they were looking for. Nathan contacts Orson to come back since they made a mistake. However, Orson, who is convinced that Simmons is involved, decides to continue secretly tailing Ben Harris. Realizing this, Ben Harris immediately notifies Simmons that he is being followed. JJ, who is intercepting Ben Harris's messages, learns about it and informs Orson that he has been exposed. Not only that, but JJ also urges Orson to hurry because Ben Harris has just requested backup from Simmons. Upon hearing this, Orson ambushes and easily takes down Ben Harris's guard. To avoid capture, Ben Harris quickly escapes by stealing someone's motorcycle. With guidance from JJ, Orson chases Ben through some shortcuts. After a prolonged pursuit, Ben Harris manages to deceive Orson by entering a building, as Orson has no access to the inside. Orson decides to continue the chase by using the stairs. Seeing that there was someone with him, Ben Harris came up with an idea to deceive Orson. He pretended to ask for help to take a photo and discreetly slipped his phone into the man's pocket. When Orson reached the top, he couldn't find Ben Harris even though their location was accurate. Confused, Orson looked down and was shocked to see a lifeless body lying below, which turned out to be the person who had been pushed by Ben Harris. Seeing Orson off guard, Ben Harris attempted to push him from behind, but with extraordinary reflexes, Orson managed to dodge and even made Ben Harris fall instead. JJ quickly carried the body, and they promptly made their way back. Upon their arrival at the headquarters, they received news from Knighton confirming that the data sent by Sarah from Simmons' computer was indeed accurate, and it revealed that they would be trading a hard drive to activate the AI weapon. This weapon, not to be taken lightly, had the capability to launch a nuclear attack with the perpetrator remaining unidentified. However, the buyer of the hard drive had yet to see Ben Harris's face, as their transactions were conducted solely through voice messages. Considering that Ben Harris was already deceased, Orson made the decision to disguise himself as Ben Harris in order to thwart the criminals who intended to destroy the world. To ensure everything went smoothly, Orson sought Sarah's assistance in altering his voice to resemble Ben Harris when he would contact Simmons later. With all the plans in place, Orson went straight to meet the buyer of the hard drive, while Sarah successfully transformed Orson's voice into Ben Harris's voice. This way, he wouldn't raise suspicion and would be taken directly to the transaction location. So far, so Meanwhile, Simmons, unaware of Ben Harris's demise, appeared calm as usual, and he excused himself briefly to contact Ben Harris to guide the transaction. JJ, who had successfully trailed them from behind, quickly descended to protect Orson with his sniper rifle. Upon reaching the transaction point, it was revealed that the buyer's name was Casa. Not wanting to waste any time, Casa opened the handle suitcase and asked Orson to input 15 passcodes to unlock it. With Sarah's assistance, Orson immediately called Simmons to request the codes, and indeed, Simmons fell for the ruse. At the same time, Simmons' henchmen realized that someone had intercepted Simmons' conversation. Orson managed to input 15 codes provided by Simmons, and the $10 million transaction was successful. However, from a distance, one of Alex's henchmen from the previous robbery a few nights ago recognized Orson's face. Before they could lay a hand on Orson, JJ took action and attacked them, resulting in a fierce shootout. 
Sarah, who had also canceled the transaction, quickly fled the scene with Danny. As for Orson, he found himself relentlessly pursued by a helicopter. When Orson was cornered, it was revealed that they were Mike's henchmen. Mike, along with his other henchmen, captured Casa and ruthlessly slaughtered them, taking the handle with them. You have the case. It's good both. Prior to that, Mike ordered his henchmen to execute Orson, but once again, JJ intervened to protect him. I'm gonna kill you now. Shoot first, then. Realizing that Sarah was the one who hacked into his system, Simmons deployed a large number of troops to hunt down Sarah and Danny. With her exceptional shooting skills, Sarah managed to disable one of Simmons' henchmen's vehicles. Running out of ammo, they then decided to escape the chase. Orson and JJ, who were piloting a helicopter to rescue Sarah, spotted her inside the tunnel. Orson quickly caught up and fired a missile towards their adversaries. Meanwhile, Nathan received information from the authorities stating that Mike was not working with any government. Nathan concluded that Mike was planning something evil. Upon hearing this, Orson had an idea to leverage all the evidence of Simmons' crimes to convince him to cooperate. Initially met with skepticism, Orson managed to persuade the team, and they returned to Simmons' headquarters. Upon arrival, Orson presented a negotiation plan to persuade Simmons to help them reclaim the handle. Initially, Simmons refused, but after Danny started persuading him, Simmons agreed to assist them. Night fell, and it was time for Simmons to reveal who Mike was selling the AI weapon to. Meanwhile, Orson, JJ, and Sarah took action from another angle. Sarah used a drone as their eyes, while Orson and JJ swiftly incapacitated the enemies. Blocking their comps? Blocked. I have the two. Inside the room, they discovered that Mike was selling the weapon to Trent and Arnold, Simmons business associates who had also attended the previous charity event. It was revealed that their intention was to disrupt the world's currency and create chaos and anarchy everywhere. While Simmons engaged their attention, Orson and JJ silently eliminated all of Mike's henchmen. Orson ruthlessly slaughtered them as he made his way through the tower. On the other hand, Simmons provided a list of their closest associates and threatened to eliminate them if he didn't receive his payment. Nice, please, Danny. Three, two. There we are. Let's go and have a drink. Come on. It's my mom. After Simmons and Danny left the scene, Arnold quickly ordered his men to process the payment as his mother's name was on the list provided by Simmons. However, shortly after, Mike's hacker took control of Arnold and Trent's transaction route, and Mike signaled his henchmen to eliminate them, leading to a fierce shootout. After Orson successfully dispatched all of Mike's henchmen, he entered the transaction room, only to be surprised to find everyone lifeless. As he was about to leave with the handle, Mike suddenly appeared and attacked Orson from behind. Mike, unable to defend himself, was mercilessly beaten by Orson. I need the fucking key! You can fucking have it! Ah! After defeating Mike, Orson went out of the room and was picked up by JJ and Sarah. The next morning, they traveled to Doha, Qatar, to deliver the handle to Nathan. As their previous mission was a success, Nathan offered them another job with a spectacular payment. I have another job for you. The money is spectacular. However, Orson firmly declined, no matter how spectacular the payment was, and decided to go on vacation. And the movie finally ended. Orson! What do you think of the movie? Drop your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit like and support our channel by subscribing to boost our motivation in creating more engaging contents for you to enjoy. And if you have any movie you want us to recap, please do tell us in the comments section as well. Until next time. Let's